All right, folks, this is a classic ballistic pendulum problem. And uh, here goes. Um, a 28 gram rifle bullet traveling at 230 meters per second buries itself in a 3.6 kilogram wooden pendulum hanging on a 2.8 meter long wooden rod. The pendulum then swings upward in an arc when the bullet strikes the block. What angle from vertical does the pendulum achieve at the top of the arc? So the unknown, the thing we're after, is that right there. Now, this problem is going to involve conservation of momentum, and it's going to involve conservation of energy. So here goes nothing. Uh, to begin with, here's what we have. We have the mass of the bullet. The mass of the bullet is 28 grams, which is going to be 0 0.028 kilograms. And it starts out with a velocity of the bullet of 230 meters per second. That is our before situation. So we're going to have a collision. This collision right here is going to be from, from this, this section of this problem is going to be a conservation of momentum situation. So this is all going to be looking at the momentum before. Now the momentum before, here's my mass of my bullet, velocity of the bullet. The mass of my, um, let's say the mass of my pendulum, let's call it P for pendulum, because if I use two Bs for block that I think I will get confused. The mass of my wooden pendulum is 3.60 kilograms. And to begin with, the velocity of my pendulum is zero. Afterwards, after the two are joined together, um, the velocity afterwards is unknown. But we are going to need to know that in order to determine what's going to happen after the pendulum starts to swing. So the first thing I'm going to figure out is I want to figure out the velocity after for this pendulum. How fast is it going to be going after the bullet strikes the block and the two become one. So let's do that first. So to write out my equation, here goes. Um, mass of the pendulum, velocity of the pendulum, mass of the bullet, velocity of the bullet is going to be equal to mass of the pendulum, velocity of the pendulum after, mass of the bullet, velocity of the bullet after. Now afterwards, these two are embedded into the same block. It is a perfectly inelastic collision. It is a hit and a stick. So these two are going to be the same. The other thing we know is before we start, that pendulum is not going to be moving. And so beforehand, this term will go to zero. So let's go ahead and put some numbers with this and get some numbers out of this. So the mass of my bullet, I just need a little bit further down so I can see what's going on. The mass of my bullet is going to be 0 0.028 kilograms, that's the mass of my bullet, times the velocity of my bullet, 230 meters per second. I got that from right here. That's going to be my momentum before. I'm going to pull this outward, the velocity after, factor this out times the combined masses of the bullet, 0 0.028 kilograms, plus the mass of the pendulum block, 3.60 uh, kilograms. So let's simplify 0 0.028 times 230, 6.44 kilogram meters per second equals velocity after, and this combined mass on the other end, 3.6 plus 0 0.028 is going to be 3.628 kilograms. To solve for velocity after then, I'm going to divide 6.44 kilogram meters per second, divide by 3.628 kilograms. And when I do that, 3.628, I'm going to end up with a velocity after of 1.78 meters per second. So that's going to be the velocity 
after for the pendulum and the bullet. Okay, now that is immediately after the collision. That's what's going to be going on. Now, I'm after this angle. Woo, I'm sorry about that. I got a little carried away. I'm after this angle. Now, how the heck am I going to figure out that angle? I'm now going to, for the second half of this problem in here, I'm now going to change from conservation of momentum to conservation of energy. And here's the idea I'm going to look at. Because at this moment, all of the energy contained within this system is kinetic energy. And as the pendulum rises, kinetic energy is transformed into potential energy. If I can, can figure out this change from kinetic energy to potential energy, I can also use this to determine the change in height. This change in height I can use with some dimensions from the situation to help me determine that angle. So bear with me, here we go. So the next thing we're going to look at is conservation of energy, conservation of energy, and we are going to say that kinetic energy at the bottom of the pendulum path is going to be equal to potential energy at the top after the pendulum has swung. So that kinetic energy at the bottom, when it goes whoop and it swings up like that, is going to convert to potential energy at that top. That's the transformation I'm going to look at. The kinetic energy at the bottom is going to be one half the combined masses of the pendulum plus the block and the velocity after the collision. That's this velocity from up there. And that's going to be squared, that combined velocity squared. The potential energy is going to be the combined masses of the pendulum plus the block. The height, the change in height that we have gotten, times the acceleration of gravity. Now, why am I going through all this conflagration? Because I want to find that height. And I know everything, so let's find that height. So, um, one half, the combined masses of everything, I found that combined mass right here, is 3.628 kilograms. The velocity that I just found is 1.78, 1.78 meters per second squared equals my combined mass, 3.628 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared times my unknown change in height. So let's go through, let's do a little math and see if we can find that height. So my left-hand side of my equation, 1.78 squared times 3.628 divided by 2. The left-hand side of my equation, 5.75 joules is going to be equal to 3.628 times 9.8. So the right side is 35.6. Uh, this is going to be newtons times height. So height, change in height here, is going to be 5.75 joules divided by 35.6 newtons. So let's go ahead and do that division, 5.75 divided by 35.6, and I end up with 0 0.162 meters. A joule is a newton meter and Newton's cancel, and that will give me meters. Okay, now, why do I care so much about this? This is where it gets entertaining and very interesting. Let's take a look at this whole picture of what's going on. We were told that the original pendulum was 2.80 meters long. When the pendulum swung up, it swung up in an arc. So this is not a triangle, this is an arc. It's also a rigid pendulum. Because it's a rigid pendulum, um, if this is 2.8 meters, this length is 2.80 meters. If I know that the change in height, the change in height here, 
is 0 0.162 meters. If I know this is the change in height as it swung up, here's what I know. If this is my change in height h, I am looking for theta. That's my holy grail. That's what I'm after. If I know this is h, I can take 2.8 meters minus h, and that will give me x. What's x? This is x. This distance from here to here is x. And once I have x and I have 2.8 meters for this side, I have a triangle. I have two sides of it. I can find theta. So let's go forth and find x. 2.8 minus 0.162 is going to give me 2.64 meters is going to be x. If x is 2.64 meters, I now have a hypotenuse. I now have an adjacent side. Which trig function has hypotenuse and adjacent? That looks a lot like cosine to me. Cosine of theta is adjacent over hypotenuse. So the cosine of my unknown angle is the adjacent 2.64 meters. Hypotenuse 2.80 meters. If I do that division, 2.64 divided by 2.80, and then I do inverse cosine or second cosine, I end up with an angle theta of 19.5 degrees. Tricky problem, good problem, love this problem. This is a ballistic pendulum.